Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. In today's video, I'll be teaching you how to make this really cute cottage core style crochet garland that you can hang on any wall. So let's get into it. So for yarn, I'm using all double knit acrylic yarn. So I'm using brown, white, and you're going to need orange for the fox, yellow for the flower center, and then beige, cream, and then I'm using pink, purple and blue for the flowers and then I'm using the green for the leaves and like the main part of the garland but the blue, purple and pink are all interchangeable so feel free to use other colours for the flowers so you're also going to need a 2.5mm hook some scissors a sewing needle and a stitch marker so we're going to start with the flower um, so we're starting with the yellow yarn um, because that is the center of the flower so I'm making a slip knot and I'm attaching it to my hook and then I'm just going to make a chain of three you're then going to want to slip stitch into the third chain from the hook and then you're going to want to try and separate the stitches so that you can find that center hole and then once you have found the center hole we're going to make 10 single crochets into the ring you have your 10 single crochets you're then just going to want to grab your stitch marker and place it in to that very last stitch that you made and that will mark the end of each round and then you're just going to want to pull tight on the string to close the ring for round two you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then you're going to make two single crochets into the second stitch so you're basically making an increase every other stitch and you're going to want to continue this all the way around and I'm going to stop at the very last increase so I'm going to make my first increase at the end and then in the second single crochet that I would make I'm going to stop there So I'm about to make my last increase, so I'm making the first single crochet and then when I make the second I'm actually going to drop the yarn and pick up the new colour which is blue, make a slip knot and then I'm just going to attach the slip knot to the hook and finish the single crochet with the blue yarn and then you're just going to want to remove the stitch marker because it kind of gets in the way at this point and we don't really need it anymore so I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and then we're going to start our next round so we're going to make a double crochet into that very same stitch we made the slip stitch into so then I'm just making a double crochet and then into the second stitch I'm making two double crochets so that's one and that's two and then into the next stitch I'm making a double crochet and then a single crochet so for the next petal we're going to be repeating the sequence all around so I'm going to make a single crochet and a double crochet in the same stitch and then into the second stitch two double crochets And then into the third stitch a double crochet and a single crochet so you're going to want to repeat the sequence of the second petal all the way around until you have five petals so I will meet you back when I have five petals all together Thank you. 
So once you have finished making your petals, you're just going to want to slip stitch into that first slip stitch that we made at the beginning to join everything together. And then I'm just going to chain one and cut both pieces of yarn. And then that is your flower all finished. And I'm going to make a couple of these and then weave in the ends. So next we're going to be making the leaves. So I'm grabbing my green yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot. Then I'm going to place it onto the hook and then pull the slip knot down tight. And then I'm going to make a chain of 11. So once you have your chain of 11, you're going to flip your chain over so that the back bumps are now on top. And then you're going to make a slip stitch into the second back bump from the hook. You could also make it into the chain if you wanted to. And then to the next chain, I'm going to make a single crochet. Into the next, I'm going to make a half double crochet. And then I'm going to make a double crochet into the next four back bumps or chains if you're doing chains. I'm then going to make a half double crochet into the next back bump, a single crochet into the next, and lastly a slip stitch into the very last back bump. Okay, so now you have half of the leaf done, and then I'm going to kind of flip the work around, so I'm kind of working on top of the leaf now. And I'm going to do exactly what I just did, but in the reverse order. So I'm going to make a slip stitch into the first stitch and then a single crochet into the next. I'm weaving that end in as I go. And then a half double crochet into the next stitch. And then one double crochet into the next four stitches. And then a half double crochet, a single crochet, and then lastly a slip stitch into that very last stitch. Okay, and then you can just cut that short piece of yarn. And then I just chained one to fasten off. So now I'm just weaving in the tail to the back of the leaf and I made about four of these leaves but you can make as many as you want um, but yeah I made four. So we're now going to be making the acorn so I'm going to start with my light brown yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot and attach it to the hook and then I'm going to make a chain of eight. Once you have your chain of eight, you are going to make one single crochet into the second chain from the hook, and then you're going to make one single crochet into each chain across, which should give you seven chains, uh, seven stitches at the end of the row. So for row two, we're going to just turn the work and we're going to make one single crochet into each stitch along and I'm going to weave in this tail as I go. So it's just one single crochet into each stitch. Now I'm just going to cut the tail because we don't really need that anymore, it's all weaved in. And then for row three, we are just going to skip 
the first stitch and then make a single crochet into the second stitch which will make a decrease and then I'm going to make one single crochet into the next three stitches and then lastly I'm going to skip the next stitch and make a single crochet into that last stitch so you should now have five stitches at the end of the row for row four we're going to just turn the work and make one single crochet into each stitch across and then for row five we're going to turn the work we're going to skip the first stitch and make a single crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to skip the next stitch and into the last stitch make one single crochet which should leave you with three stitches and then we are just going to turn the work and make one single crochet into each stitch across and then once you have done that you're just going to continue single crocheting across the edge of the acorn so around the border so just find a space in the next sort of loop and make a single crochet and then I'm just making one single crochet into each space across the top of the acorn and I just continue this all the way around So once you have done your very last single crochet, I'm going to just make a slip stitch back into that first stitch of the row and then you can just chain one and cut the yarn and fasten off. And then with my hook, I'm just going to weave that end into the back of the acorn. So we're now going to be working on the top part of the acorn. So I'm taking the dark brown yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot I'm going to insert the hook into the top of the acorn and then I'm going to bring my yarn onto the hook and pull through that stitch and then chain one to kind of attach it. And then into the same stitch we are going to make a single crochet and then we are going to make a puff stitch. So we're going to yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop and then again yarn over insert the hook into the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and then finally yarn over and pull through all of those loops I'm going to repeat that into the next stitch so yarn over insert the hook pull up a loop yarn over insert the hook pull up a loop again and then yarn over pull through all of the loops so I'm going to continue this all the way across until I have six puff stitches and then into that very last puff stitch um, space we'll make a single crochet afterwards so that it kind of mirrors the other side so I'm just making that single crochet into that final stitch so that it matches the opposite side and that is the first row finished so for the next row we're just going to turn the work we're going to skip the very first stitch of the row and we're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch and then we're going to make one slip stitch into the next two stitches across so two more slip stitches And then you're going to chain three. And then you're going to want to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. And then to the next stitch, uh, into the next chain, sorry, half double crochet. And then to that very same space, make a slip stitch to kind of join the top of the acorn together. So into the next stitch, we are going to make a slip stitch and then the same into the next stitch. 
and then we're finally going to skip the next stitch and we're going to make a slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made. So it can be a bit fiddly but I'm just attaching the hook and then I'm making a slip stitch into that last single crochet. And then I'm just going to chain one and fasten off. And I'm just cutting that small bit of yarn because that's weaved in as well. And then I'm just going to weave in the tail to the back of the acorn. And then that is the acorn all finished. So we're now going to move on to the toadstool house. So I'm taking my cream yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot. And then I'm going to attach that onto the hook. And then I'm going to make a chain of 11. Once you have your chain, you're going to make one single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then you're going to make one single crochet into each chain across, leaving you with 10 single crochets in the row. Once you've reached the end of the row, you're then going to just turn the work and you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch across. For row three, we are going to turn the work and then we are going to skip the first stitch and make a single crochet into the second stitch. And then we are going to continue to make one single crochet across the row until you are left with two stitches. Once you have two stitches left, you're going to skip the next stitch and make a single crochet into that very last stitch. So for row four, we're going to turn the work and we're just going to make one single crochet into each stitch. For row five, we're going to turn the work and then we're just going to make one single crochet into each stitch, so the same as row four. So for row six, we are going to turn the work and we are going to make another decrease row. So we're going to skip the first stitch and make a single crochet into this next stitch. And then we're going to make one single crochet across until we have two stitches left. And then you're going to skip the next stitch and make a single crochet into that last stitch. For row seven, we are going to just make one single crochet into each stitch across. For row 8 we are going to turn the work, we're going to skip the first stitch, make a single crochet into the second and then make a single crochet across until you have two stitches left and then you're going to skip the next stitch and make a single crochet into that last stitch. So by this point you should have four stitches left in your row. And now you're just going to chain one and fasten off. 
And then I've just weaved in the ends to the back of the mushroom and then that is the base of the mushroom toadstool house all done. So we're now going to move on to the top of the mushroom so I'm taking the dark brown yarn and I'm making a slip knot and then I'm just attaching this to the hook and I'm making a chain of four. Then I'm going to pick up the base of the mushroom and you're going to insert the hook into that very first stitch of the row. And then you're going to make a single crochet with the brown yarn. And then you're just going to want to make one single crochet into each stitch. Once you have done that, you're going to chain five. Then going to turn the work around so we'll be working into the back of the chain now and you're going to make one single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then you're going to make one single crochet into each chain across and then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch across And then you're going to make one single crochet into each chain across which should leave you with 12 stitches in the row. For row 2 we are going to turn the work and we're just going to make one single crochet into each stitch across. For row 3 to 6 we are going to be turning the work and we're going to be making decrease uh, a decrease row um, for the next 4 rows. So I'm going to skip the first stitch, single crochet into the second, then single crochet across and then once you're left with 2 stitches in the row you're going to skip the very next stitch and then you're going to make a single crochet into the last stitch. And you're going to want to repeat that row until you reach row 6. So here I am just completing row 4 again, decreasing at either side of the mushroom. So you should have four stitches once you have finished row six and then for row seven you're going to turn the work and you're just going to make one single crochet into each stitch across. For row eight turn the work and make one single crochet into each stitch across. For row 9 you're going to turn the work, you're going to skip the first stitch and make a single crochet into the next, then skip the next stitch and make a single crochet into the last stitch. So you should have two stitches left and then row 10, turn the work, skip the first stitch and single crochet into that last stitch. And then you're just going to want to chain one and fasten off. 
and then you're going to grab your brown yarn and make a slip knot and because I'm left-handed and I work um, anti-clockwise I work in a circular motion so I'm going to attach the yarn into the corner of the bottom of the mushroom and I'm going to chain one to connect it and then I'm just going to make a single crochet into each space all around the edge of the top of the mushroom so just finding a space in to the next area and making a single crochet and I just continue to make single crochets all around the border this just neatens the edge of the mushroom Once you reach the corner, I'm just going to make a slip stitch into that very last space and then I just chain one and fasten off and then cut off any um, loose ends and then I just weave that tail into the back of the mushroom. So I'm now going to repeat the process again but for the white part of the mushroom so I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to insert it into the top right corner of the white section and then I'm just making a single crochet into each space around the border. So reach that very last space I'm going to make a slip stitch and then I'm going to chain one and cut the yarn and then I'm just going to weave that end into the back of the mushroom okay so we've finished with the main part of the mushroom so we're now going to be creating the door, so I'm going to grab the light brown yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot. And then I'm going to attach this to the hook and I'm going to make a chain of six. I'm then going to flip the chain over and work in the back bump and I'm going to make a single crochet into that second back bump and then one single crochet into each back bump across. So you should have five single crochets at the end of the row. For row two, you're going to turn the work and you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch as normal and I'm going to be weaving in the end as I go. And then from rows three to six, I'm going to be continuing to make one single crochet into each stitch. And then for row seven, I'm going to make a single crochet into the first stitch, a half double crochet into the second stitch, a double crochet into the third stitch, a half double crochet into the fourth stitch and a single crochet into the fifth stitch and then like before I'm just going to continue making a single crochet all the way down across and back up to make a neat border so I'm just placing a single crochet into each space across and then once I reach the end of that I am going to just slip stitch back into the first stitch of the row
and then I'll go to chain one and fasten off. And I'm going to weave that end in to the back of the door. And then to make the doorknob, you're going to want to grab a piece of yarn, um, the dark brown yarn, and you're going to make a double knot at one end. You're going to place that onto your sewing needle. And then you're going to grab the door and then you're going to put the sewing needle through from the back of the door to the front where you want the doorknob to sit. And then you're going to insert the needle into a row above and then pull through and then you're just going to want to kind of go back and forth between the two holes um, to create kind of a bit more thickness so i believe that i did about three passes through um, both holes and then once i was finished with that i just turned to the back of the door and i made like a little double knot with the needle so I just pull through a stitch and then I kind of pull through that loop um, to make a knot and then I just do that again to make a double knot. And then I just cut the yarn and then that is the doorknob all finished. And then with the beige yarn I'm going to cut a piece off of that and I'm going to make a double knot at one end. And then I just sew the door around um, into the middle of the mushroom so I'm going from the back of the mushroom through to the bottom corner of the door pulling through and then I'm going into a stitch above and then pulling through to the back and then from the back pushing the needle through from the back to the front and then I'm just kind of working my right way around the edge of the door until it is all connected And then again I'm making that double knot at the back once I have finished that and then I can just cut the yarn and then that is the door all sewn on. So I'm now going to make the spots on the top of the mushroom so I'm taking white yarn and you're going to need quite a long piece of yarn for this and I'm just inserting the needle through to one corner of the mushroom and pulling through and then I'm going a few spaces across and going from the front to the back uh, that should create like a little line and then I'm basically just going to pass through um, the first hole that we went into again and then back across to the second hole to build that thickness and I do this about three times in total per spot And then once I have finished that spot, I then just move across a few spaces and then pull through from the back to the front and then go across a few spaces and pull from the front to the back. And then again, I just make two more passes through um, those holes to create um, a thicker spot. And then I just continue this across and then once I have finished the third spot I then like move up a row and then work from right to left um, and I just kind of did this randomly I didn't like make it super neat because I kind of wanted it to look a little bit more um, kind of rough around the edges I guess so yeah I just kind of went across and then I kind of went up a bit and then down a bit and it was just kind of a bit more random but yeah I just basically made three passes into each um, like spot that I, I wanted to make. So once you've made all those spots again I just made um, two double knots at the back to secure everything and then once I finished that I just cut the yarn and that is the mushroom all done. 
We're now going to work on the fox's body slash tail. So I'm going to take the orange yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm then going to make a chain of three. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And then like we did before with the flowers, I'm going to make six half double crochets into the center of that ring. So once you have made those six half double crochets, you can just add a stitch marker to the final stitch. And then for round two, I'm going to make two half double crochets into each stitch. For round three, I'm going to make one half double crochet into the next five stitches. And then into the next stitch, I'm going to make a half double crochet, a double crochet, and then a half double crochet, all in the same stitch. And then I'm going to make five more half double crochets. So one half double crochet into the next five stitches. And then into the very last stitch, I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to make one half double crochet, a double crochet, and then a half double crochet all into that same stitch. And then just replace the stitch marker. Round four, I'm going to make one half double crochet into the first stitch and then two half double crochets into the second stitch. And I'm gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. So one half double crochet and then two half double crochets into the next. So for the next round, I am going to do one half double crochet into each stitch. And then for the last round, I'm going to slip stitch into the next five stitches. Then I'm going to make a chain of four. And then you're going to want to turn the work, so we're now going to be working in the back of the chain. I'm going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then to the next stitch, I'm going to make a half double crochet. And then into the next chain, I'm going to make a double crochet. And then I'm going to make a double crochet into the next eight stitches. So we're now working into the opposite direction of where we were working before. So we're going towards the stitch marker now. Okay, 
mistake once you have done your eight double crochets I'm just going to slip stitch into the next stitch and then chain one and fasten off okay and then you're just going to want to weave that end in and then the foxtail is all done so we're now going to work on the fox's head so I've just made a chain of three with the orange yarn and then I've slip stitched into the third chain from the hook to make the ring and then I'm going to make six single crochets into the ring And then I'm just going to place the stitch marker into the sixth stitch and then I'm just going to tighten the ring with that short tail and then for round two I'm just going to make two single crochets into each stitch around And then for round three, I'm going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochets into the second stitch all the way around. So one in the first stitch and then two in the second stitch. So for round four, I'm going to make one single crochet into the next four stitches. I'm then going to make one half double crochet into the next stitch. I'm then going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches. I'm then going to make one half double crochet into the next stitch and then a double crochet into the same stitch and then a half double crochet into the same stitch as well and then into the next stitch I'm going to make a single crochet and then a single crochet into the next stitch and then a half double crochet into the next and then I'm going to make one single crochet into the next three stitches and then I'm going to chain five and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, a single crochet into the next, a half double crochet into the next, and a double crochet into the last chain. I'm then going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then I'm going to remove the stitch marker, and I'm going to make a single crochet into the next four stitches. And then I'm going to chain four because this ear is going to be smaller. And then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. A single crochet into the next chain and a half double crochet into the last chain. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm just going to chain one and fasten off. And then I'm just going to weave those ends back into the back of the fox's head. So I'm going to start now on the ear detail. So I'm grabbing the white yarn and I'm attaching it to the needle. And then I'm going to insert the needle from the back of the ear and pull through. And then I'm going directly above and then pulling through. And then I'm just going back to the first stitch and then back to the second stitch a few times until I get the thickness that I want. And then I am just making a double knot at the back and then weaving in those ends. And then for the face detail, I am inserting the needle 
into the side of the face and then pulling all the way through and then I'm wrapping it around the face and then going back through the same stitch a few times until I have like a good thickness so I'm just going through the back and then pulling through and it's wrapping around the face and then I move down um, like a row and then repeat the same thing I go into the same stitch a few times wrapping the yarn around the face then I continue this all the way down the fox's um, face all the way across to the other side and then once I have finished that I just make a double knot like I have been doing and then weaving in those ends So for the eyes I'm grabbing the dark brown yarn and I'm placing it on the needle and then I'm going from the back of the head and then pulling through and then I'm going to a row uh, directly above and then pulling through there and then I go through a stitch next to it and then pull through so that it creates like this kind of upside down um, V shape and then I just repeat that on the other side so going from the back to the front and then going above and then going to the side, pulling through, and then going back into the stitch above. So you create these upside down Vs. And then that is how I made the eyes. And then I just made a double knot at the back and then weaved in those ends. And then for the nose, I just basically repeated the same steps for the white um, face details. So I basically just started wrapping the yarn um, around the bottom of the fox's face um, until I got the thickness that I wanted. So I just basically went from the back to the front, wrapped it around and then went from the back to the front again, over and over. And then once I was happy with the thickness, I just went to the back of the face and made a double knot same process and then i just weaved in those ends and then that is the fox's face all done so then i just sewed the fox's head to the body so with the orange yarn i just went from the back of the body and through to the head and then pulled through and then i just started going from through both sides of the back of the body and the head um, all around the face until both were attached and then I just made sure that I was kind of like attaching those back stitches of the fox's body to the head, just basically going back and forth. It wasn't like anything super neat, um, but it's just like basic sewing just to attach both sides together. And then once I was done with that, I just made a double knot at the back and then weaved in those ends. So then with the green yarn I just made a chain of about 289 and that was enough for about 48 inches and then I just made a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then I continued this until I had 11 single crochets across. And then once I had my 11 single crochets, I picked up my first um, like ornament I made and then I inserted the hook into the top of that acorn and then I inserted the hook into the next chain and then I just made a single crochet to connect them. And then from this point forward, I spaced each ornament out to about 18 single crochets. So I just did 17 single crochets and then on the 18th, I attached the next um, ornament. So I'm attaching now the leaf. So I'm just inserting the hook into the leaf and then I'm inserting the hook into the next chain. So that would be the eight. Uh, 18th um, one and then I just continued making single crochets across until I reached about the 17th or 18th one and then I just grabbed the next ornament and then for this fox I needed to do about four single crochets across to actually attach it so that meant that I only had to do about 14 actual single crochets into the chain after that And then again, I'm just attaching the flower with the same process. It's 
once I reached the end of the chain I just did my 11 single crochets at the end again this doesn't have to be like super accurate the numbers don't need to be super accurate I just um, spaced each ornament out evenly and then just kind of picked up each one and attached it as I went so I just cut the yarn and then I just tied those ends together and then I just weaved in the ends to the back of the kind of garland chain that we made and this is what the final result is looking like when it's hung up i really enjoyed making this project if you guys enjoyed this video um, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up and i will see you in the next one bye guys